Welcome back everybody, my name is Nick930 and this is my final review for the open world motorsports game, The Crew 2. The Crew 2 takes what it learned from the original game and expands upon it, with a ton of new event types, new vehicles, and a more cohesive open world cross country sandbox. But unfortunately, the improvements to the gameplay have also resulted in a reduced overall graphical presentation and a few key features that feel like odd exclusions. So to kick this review off, let's talk about the game's story and mission structure. The Crew 2 is set up like a huge week-long TV event. You'll take control of an unnamed character that doesn't speak throughout the game, and will interact with hero Yuki Carter, your personal mechanic and apparently life coach, because this guy will never shut up. The writing and the voiceover work for this character is terrible, and probably one of the most annoying aspects of the game. We've got four ways we can get this puppy rolling. It's your pick. There's even a point in the game where Hiro acknowledges that he's being annoying, but then continues to talk anyway. The other characters in the game aren't as annoying, but they're completely forgettable, and they only really serve as structure for the events. Though, to be fair, this game is a racing game, so I don't really care so much about the story. The game's events are split up between four teams, street racing, off-road, freestyle, and pro racing. Each team has three to four different event types or disciplines that can be unlocked by completing events for that team. Once you unlock a new discipline, a random cutscene will play, talking about someone's personal experience riding a bike or something, and then you're forced to return to the team's headquarters and purchase a vehicle to use for new events. The vehicles are way too expensive, often requiring you to spend most of what you've earned just to continue playing the game. I found myself often completing every available event on the map, and despite having not spent my money on anything else, being forced to spend almost all of it on a new vehicle to unlock more events. But the pricing on all the items in the game is way too high, even something as simple as a shirt for my avatar costs at least $2,000. You only get around $15,000 for completing a race, so these prices are insane. Lowering the prices would significantly improve the flow of the game and give players more of an opportunity to experiment with newer vehicles. If you manage to complete 75% of a team's events, you'll unlock the ultimate challenge for that team, which involves facing off against the team's leading champions. Doing so will unlock a unique special vehicle. But, oddly enough, these ultimate challenges barely reward you with any popularity or money. Now, popularity determines your player rank. You can progress this bar simply by winning events. Once you've won enough events, your popularity rank will increase, which will unlock more challenging events for most of the game's disciplines. There's a ton of variety with the events, more so than I anticipated. You'll have your standard street races, boat races, and plane races, but there's also drag racing, which features an entirely different control scheme than the normal vehicles, and also stunt-based events that have you completing certain stunts within a time limit. Unfortunately, these stunt-based events can be really boring at times, especially the plane events. It's incredibly easy to score points, and most of the time, you're just stuck repeating the same stunts, like doing barrel rolls, air drifts, and near misses. Sometimes it asks you to perform loops, and it doesn't even register them. I think the game could have done away with about half of these stunt-based events, and I wouldn't really miss them. Reaching a high enough popularity will also grant you access to the big Live Extreme events, which are basically bookends to each popularity rank. They'll have you switching between three different vehicle types in the middle of the race, which is cool and makes it one of the more interesting race types in the game. After you complete this event, you're not really given anything though, aside from the typical money and car mod prizes for completing any other event. I think the game could have benefited from more of these Live Extreme events, as they're easily the most interesting in the game. I also would like it if they offered some way to skip the repetitive cutscene that plays at the beginning of each of these live extreme events, especially considering you're forced to watch them over again if you try to restart the race after making a mistake. The open world aspect of the game is also lackluster, despite all of the game's cutscenes and dialogue consistently reminding you to stop playing events and go explore. Outside the main events, there's a bunch of uninspired side activities. You can try to complete speed traps, which have you try to hit a certain speed on various roads, you can take photos of famous landmarks using the built-in photo app, which obnoxiously by default has the Crew 2 logo that needs to be disabled manually every time. Or you can try and outrun a red circle that grows almost as if you're escaping an impending explosion. I rarely found myself just exploring or traversing the world because everything felt so dead, empty, and pointless. In the original Crew, you needed to explore to find new venues and events. But in the Crew 2, there's no real point in exploring because you can jump around to each new event that appears without ever needing to realize how big the world is. The dynamic weather from the original game has made a return, and been improved upon quite a bit. Rainstorms will come and go, and now big snow showers can occur, blanketing the entire country in a few inches of snow, which does slightly affect your driving control. It's a bit odd seeing a snowstorm coast to coast, especially in Florida, California, and Texas, 
but it does mix things up and makes some of the races more interesting. Some events do have specific weather conditions that will force the time of day and weather to change, but most races will trigger with whatever current weather and time you have in-game. I do wish there was a way to manually select the time of day and even weather options. The night time looks terrible in this game, and the car's headlights are so dim it's difficult to see some of the darker objects at times. I often found myself ignoring missions during the night time so that I could better appreciate them during the bright sunny day instead. So let's move on from the game's structure and talk about the gameplay itself. The Crew 2 is first and foremost an arcade racing experience. Cars can drift without losing much speed, there's absolutely no way to damage your vehicle aside from a few cosmetic scratches, boats are hardly affected by waves, and there's zero turbulence to worry about when flying. But all the different vehicles do have their own unique style and feel to them, which for the most part makes sense. Drift cars feel loose, while indie cars feel tight and fast. Speed boats feel heavy, while sprint boats are light and have a flat bottom, allowing you to skid across a bit of land to cut corners. For the most part, I like the way the vehicles control, but there are a few vehicles that could use some tweaking. The sprint boats, while fast and fun to race, do have loose steering, making it a pain in some situations to keep it steady. Monster trucks are a complete disaster to control, often oversteering with even the slightest nudge of the joystick, and their speed feels inconsistent. The off-road buggies just feel off, and I feel like they should be a bit tighter. All vehicles in the game allow you to use a nitrous boost, but it's not really clear why this exists at all. It's not a modification that you need to unlock or attach. It just rapidly refills as you're racing, and allows you to boost off of jumps with improved speed. But I think they should have set it up so that you only gain boost from performing stunts or drifts to make it more of a reward than just an ongoing regeneration. Going into oncoming traffic, getting big air, or tailgating should at least increase the rate of the boost refill. The AI remains competitive in every race, but not because it's designed well. The Crew 2 utilizes the dreaded rubber banding design, meaning no matter how ridiculously huge a lead you have over your opponents, they'll be able to just unrealistically catch up at certain points throughout the race, so that races always feel like they're close and hard fought. This is an annoying design choice, because it means that if you crash your car early on in the race, you have plenty of opportunities to catch up, but if you happen to crash your car only at the very end of the race, despite having a massive, several minute lead on the competition, they can just breeze by within a second to steal the podium. It has happened on multiple occasions now, most annoyingly after a significantly long race across a large portion of the country, and it just feels like lazy AI programming. If you're looking for even more of a challenge, you can replay completed races and activate a hard difficulty, which gives the opponents faster cars and rewards the player with slightly more popularity and money for winning. Keeping up with the competition will require more than good driving skill. You're going to need to upgrade your cars to keep them competitive in the later stages of the game. Most races reward the player with modifications, which can be easily attached to your car through the pause menu. There's multiple categories to enhance, including exhaust, engine, tires, and brakes, and most of the time, your new unlocks will improve the car's performance. Mods can also be found hidden around the game world, and your radar will ping faster to indicate that a loot box is nearby. I'm not so much of a fan of this modification design, as it feels entirely luck-based. You can't just buy specific upgrades that you need with money, but instead need to cross your fingers that you get the right new part. I never really felt like I was improving my car with these mods, and it instead just felt like a hassle constantly having to go into my pause menu after every race to manually equip the better mods. The Crew 2, just like the original game, allows for cooperative play. You can go through the entire game with your friends, which is highly recommended if you want a more cohesive and enjoyable experience. Each race event is set up with a sort of meetup zone, allowing your friends to arrive before the race begins. If your friends just want to keep exploring, they're not forced to join your race, and you'll both remain in the same session together, which is a nice feature. What's disappointing is that the game features no actual competitive racing option. There's no matchmaking built into the game, and you can't just race against random players online unless they're part of your party already, racing alongside you. According to Ivory Tower, the game will receive a multiplayer mode later in the year, but it just seems like a huge mistake to not have this at launch. Now, I've already spoken a great deal about graphics in past videos about this game, so I'm just going to summarize very quickly. The game just doesn't look that good. The colors are often bland, even in the bright countryside with all the vegetation. The lighting feels stagnant, the textures are blurry, the cities feel empty, and the physics, even for an arcade game, are just poor. The reflective surfaces are nice, and the game can look good at times depending on the time of day and the weather and your location. But often, you're stuck staring at some ugly vegetation that looks like the crappy trees from Mafia 3, and it's hard not to notice the bad LOD pop-in as you race down the highways. The upside is that the game runs beautifully. I've had zero slowdowns with my PC configuration, whereas the original crew game still stutters to this day. Unlike the original game, The Crew 2 has almost zero loading times. 
I'm impressed with the ability to fast travel anywhere in the game world near instantly. It's disappointing that the game is locked to 60 frames per second on the PC though, and the game has crashed at least once for me when selecting a fast travel point. But aside from those minor gripes, the game looks acceptable and runs beautifully. The Crew 2 is not a bad game. It's actually a lot of fun, and I enjoy racing through all the different events all across the country. The new lighthearted direction may have been the right choice to take the series, but the execution just feels rushed. The game's story feels tacked on last minute with terrible voice acting that never wants to shut up, and the game's visuals look worse than the original game. So for $60, no, I wouldn't recommend picking this game up. But assuming this game gets good updates like The Crew, I'd keep this one on your radar and pick it up on sale with some friends. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and if you want to see more content like this in the future, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this posted every week.